Uh, today, I am talking with none other than the man, the myth, the legend, author, Dan Gutman. Dan, how are you this morning? Good, Rob. How are you? I am absolutely thrilled to be chatting with you. Uh, I have been following your work for many years, uh, and I feel like I've, I've uh, gotten a sense of you online. This is the first time you and I are ever talking face-to-face, -face. so I am thrilled about all the uh, things we're going to discuss today. Um, to start, why don't uh, I, I'm bad at summarizing other people's books and other people's biographies. Uh, so since I've got you right here, uh, if you would give a steamed audience kind of an overview of your career thus far and where you're at so that those who haven't been religiously stalking you online uh, will, will have a sense of uh, the, the man, the myth, the legend that we're about to speak with. Very quick bio you want? Absolutely. All right. OK, well, I'll let you like. Okay, I'll try and keep it brief because I don't want to bore anybody, but uh, I was born on October 19th, 1955 in New York City. Uh, very quickly, my family moved to New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey, beautiful Newark, New Jersey, uh, where I grew up. And uh, I graduated from Rutgers University in 1977 with a degree in psychology. Never took any writing classes in college. Uh, even went to graduate school for psychology for a couple of years. And then I decided that uh, I was going to move to New York City and become a starving writer, which is where all the starving writers go. So I did that for about uh, uh, 15 years, trying to write for adults unsuccessfully. And then I became a children's book writer and was unsuccessful at that for a long time, too. <laughs> but uh, gradually things started to fall into place. And I've been doing this for a long time now. I'm 63 now. And uh, I'm sure you're going to get into details about my various books, so I won't get into too much of that. But uh, I write mainly for, I would say, reluctant readers because that's what I was when I was a kid. I didn't like to read. So I think I, I relate really well to kids who are like that. How's that, Rob? That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> lots, uh, lots to unpack a little bit. Let's start with uh, your journey from reluctant reader to... Uh, extremely prolific author. Obviously, you, you've overcome that. When did uh, that turn around and you, when did you discover that books were something you enjoyed? I think it was about uh, fourth grade or so. Uh, I didn't like to read. My mother was really worried about me. You know, she used to buy me comic books and mad magazines, hoping it would get me interested in reading. Didn't really work. And it wasn't until I was in about fourth grade when I became a big sports fan, especially baseball. Um, and I, I suddenly I wanted to know everything about sports. And back then there was no Internet. You know, if you want to learn about something, you had to read, read about it. So I started reading uh, books about my favorite athletes, started reading the sports section of the newspaper. And that's what got me into into reading. Um, and uh, to this day, I would say if something doesn't really grab me on the first few pages, I just lose interest and close the book. So I, I'm. To a certain extent, I'm still a reluctant reader today. Makes sense. So how what, what what grabs you when you when you pick up a book and how do you try to grab reluctant readers such as yourself uh, now? Yeah, well, you, you know how some authors will, will spend like, you know, page after page describing what the weather looks like or what a house looks like or what somebody's face looks like. And. As a reluctant reader, and I know a lot of kids, especially boys, are reluctant readers, they don't care about any of that stuff. It's boring, and they forget it anyway. So I try and cut to the chase, get to the action. Uh, hopefully, in the first sentence of the book, I will hook the reader and make them want to know what happens next. And at the end of the first chapter, I will hook them in a way that hopefully they want to turn the page and read the next chapter. And, and if you constantly... Um, have the reader wanting more, they will keep turning the pages. And you can turn a reluctant reader into an enthusiastic reader. And um, I noticed that uh, with the My Weird School books, you never end a chapter without some sort of a cliffhanger, something to keep them coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, one that just so amused me, I wanted to make sure that I shared it here. Uh, let me see if I could quickly find it. It was uh, when they're coming in here to find uh, Miss Laney is Zandy. Yeah. Uh, she's Here's what we saw in there, in there being the girls' restroom. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. But you have. Yeah. And then, by golly, next chapter, you're going to find out. <laughs> so what makes a good uh, 
what kind of things do you do along the way to keep those readers so keep them from turning on the video game or whatever else that's competing for their attention yeah but by, by the way rob I'm, uh, i lost a little bit of your audio on that uh it got a little scratchy i don't know what happened but i i think i got can you just say something now yeah can you hear me yeah everything's good now okay yeah uh what do i do to hook them uh well just like you said it's a cliffhanger you know you got to end i try and you know i try and make each sentence flow into the next sentence like sometimes when I'm reading a book that's confusing to me, I have to read a sentence over and over again to really understand it or a paragraph. And that turns off a lot of people. So I, I have to make each sentence flow directly into the next one, each paragraph flow into the next paragraph, each chapter flow into the next chapter so that it's my goal is for the kid to pick up a book and like become so captivated that two hours later, he or she looks up and says like, Wow, that didn't even feel like I was reading. I felt like I was watching a movie in my head. You know, that's what I'm trying to accomplish in my books. And you do that by by ending each chapter in a way that almost forces the kid to read the next chapter. 